Kentucky at LSU. And listen, we know the story coming into this game. Kentucky, back-to-back wins. All the Calipari talking. By the way, Kentucky fans, you're absolutely right. I was one of the many people criticizing John Calipari a week ago when they were coming off their third straight home loss, Florida, uh, Tennessee, and Gonzaga. It's amazing what a difference a week can make, huh? As they beat Ole Miss last week. And then, in just what I can only describe as one of the most shocking results that I have, rem- I-, I can remember this college basketball season, you know, they went to Auburn and really dominated that game. Final score in that Auburn game on Saturday, 70 to 59. And what stands out to me about that game, and we talked a lot about it on Monday's pod, you know, people, people have talked about, well, if Kentucky's offense is as good as it's been and the defense just gets a little bit better, look out, they're going to be dangerous. The crazy thing about the Auburn game, it wasn't that the offense was great and the defense was just slightly improved. It was the defense that carried them. They held Auburn a 31% shooting from the field, four for 22 from three. They were great on the boards in a against a team that was one of the best rebounding teams in college basketball. 39 boards for Kentucky, 36 to Auburn. They out-rebounded them. Now, I understand Jalen Williams, Auburn's star got hurt late. It doesn't change the fact that Kentucky did what they had to do. And that was the first game where it was like, okay, we knew they could score, but could they do that defensively? It was unbelievable. I think the other thing, in my opinion, that really stood out about that game, the Kentucky win against Auburn. And again, we talked about it on Monday's Aaron Torres pot. The fact that John Calipari finally settled on a rotation. This has been a complaint constantly throughout the season. Guys coming in, guys coming out. Not all of it's his fault. There's been injuries. There's been confusion. There's been problems. Guys are weirdly out for a game, and then all of a sudden they're back. Guys have weird injuries that nobody really knows much about. So I get it's not all on Cal. But this game, even without Trey Mitchell, against Auburn, they basically played seven guys. They had the starting five of DJ Wagner, Justin Edwards, uh, Antonio Reeves, Adu Thiero, and Agana Nienso. Then they had Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham off the bench. And Aaron Bradshaw played like three minutes, and Big Z played like three minutes, and that was it. Now, I know. I get it. I understand that, you know, listen, stuff changes, and I understand you have a lot of people and a lot of kids' ears, and I don't know if it's going to be okay if you just play Aaron Bradshaw two or three minutes a game going forward. But this is what you have to do to win. You finally settle on a rotation, and this is the first time you feel really good about this Kentucky team in a while. Now, that can all go away. If you lose on Wednesday night to LSU, and I'll say this, listen, LSU is not good, but they're not going to be a pushover either, okay? So so Matt McMahon's their coach. We've had him on the pod many times. He was at Murray State before this. Uh, And first of all, you know the LSU fans are going to be rocking. LSU fans always show out for Kentucky. But the thing about LSU this year, started 3-1 and in league play. They are struggling as of right now. But if you look at them, They've lost three of four, but the three that they lost at Bama, at Tennessee, or excuse me, uh, Tennessee, at Tennessee, Bama at home, and at Florida. And they just beat South Carolina. So this LSU team is playing okay right now. And I'm telling you, Kentucky, if you do not show up ready to play, you can lose this game. I don't think they will, but you think about two straight wins. You're finally feeling good. There's finally some good vibes around the program. Everything's going good. Now you got to go on the road to a team that's kind of the bottom of the standings. You got Alabama coming to Lexington on Saturday. This just feels like the trap of all traps. And it's funny, I was listening to my buddy Doug Gottlieb from Fox Sports Radio, who I'm actually filling in for on Fox Sports Radio on Wednesday. Um, But I just bring it up because Doug said this. He said, all those Kentucky guys, they've been the star of every place that they've ever been. And the big stages like in Auburn like uh, whatever, at Tennessee later in the year, at Arkansas. Those aren't the ones that you got to worry about with those kids. They'll be ready to play in those big games. The problems are the games like at LSU, where it's going to be loud, but you don't really know much about the team. You don't really know much about the players. And are you really fired up? Is there a star on the, like, this is a game that if you're Kentucky, there's just no excuses. You have to be ready to go. You have to win this game. Now, do I think Kentucky is going to win this game? I do. The bottom line is, in my opinion, the way you have to beat Kentucky, you have to be able to be good enough defensively, which LSU is, 
reasonably good, 88th in the country in field goal percentage defense. I just don't know that they're consistent enough offensively to get the job done. One thing on LSU that is worth noting, by the way, they can get hot. They've put up 85, 86, 87 points in previous games. They also shoot 36% from three. So the one thing, Kentucky fans, I don't want to hear you guys whining if they start five of seven from three and that, whatever. I don't want to hear it, okay? They're a good three-point shooting team. you got to come ready to play. But if I had to pick that game, I would say Kentucky beats LSU, I'll say 81 to 72, setting up what will be a very fun game on Saturday against the Alabama Crimson Tide.